parents, what is the most shocking thing you've heard, witnessed, experienced upon meeting your child's new boyfriend or girlfriend? Story 1. He recounted the story of when he drove home so drunk he lost a tire hitting something, then drove on the rim for at least four miles down the interstate. Thankfully, he's sober now, but is that something you want to talk about the first time you meet me? Hey, man, I'm the best drunk driver I know. Driving drunk is never a good idea. And recounting that story to someone you just met is definitely not a great way to make a good impression. Story 2. My ex-girlfriend's mom greeted me with, Did you convince my daughter to go on birth control so you could frick her? I was shocked, to say the least, because we had only been dating for a few weeks, and she was a virgin. I wasn't pushing the issue because I really liked her. In my confused state, the girlfriend at the time explained to me that she told her mom she wanted to have spicy time with me and needed birth control. First encounter with her mom, and I never recovered from that. She hated me. How dare you plan to smash my daughter? Well, ma'am, I was planning on taking things slow. However, to be honest, I can now think of nothing else. I think I've had my daily dose of irony. <laughs> this is quite the awkward encounter. It's clear that the girlfriend's mom was overreacting a bit. But it's also understandable that she would want to protect her daughter. Story 3. A quote from my dad. I didn't expect her to be black. Nothing negative. Both of my parents just didn't see it coming. Story 4. When I was 16, I met this girl who went to high school across town through a buddy who was dating her friend. Our parents were pretty liberal, and we spent most of our weekends getting high and drunk in the pool house and swimming when we wanted to cool off. Needless to say, it took about three days before I lost my V-card to this girl. And it was the awesomest. Here's the thing. When you're 16 and you find a girlfriend who is down to smash, you never let that go. I was immediately her boyfriend. Despite the fact I didn't know that much about her, I knew everything that I needed to know. She had a vagina, and she let me put my dong in it. Week two of this torrid romance, and something isn't quite right in the land down under. It was really burning when I pee. Like, every time. I went to Catholic school, so I knew all about how Satan invades extramarital spicy time and fills your lust pole with STDs. I knew I had one. The only question was, which one? A lot of people would ask, This chick just gave you dong rot. You dumped her, right? Let me just refer you to the previous statement. I was 16, and she was letting me have spicy time with her. We only got more serious. Like getting close to meeting the parent serious. But love didn't cure whatever evil was festering in my penis, and I had to schedule a doctor's appointment. In the exam room, I had to fess up to my doctor who I had always secretly suspected of being gay, my terrible suspicions, that I had third-degree dong rot with a chance of AIDS. I had to pee in a cup, and he manually examined my... He asked me why I suspected I had caught an STD, and in the spirit of doctor-patient confidentiality, I told him everything, which came out to, I met a random girl from across town, and I've been humping her everywhere. Pool, bushes, suburbs, rugs, carpets, dirt piles. I don't know much about her, but if she's willing to spice me up, she's probably kind of a party girl. It took a week, but the results came back. I had a benign UTI, most likely from bareback riding in dirt piles. Cleaning it up was his advice. This was a giant relief, and a frick you to Sister Helen who had convinced me that God punishes all fornicators with a lifelong curse of dong fire. Everything seemed to be great. The penis problem cleared up and this girl and I kept seeing each other. After a few months, she invited me to her family dinner. Her mom was nice and pretty hot. Her dad was my doctor. <laughs> oh, while it's understandable that a teenager would be excited about having naughty time, it's not a great idea to be so reckless and careless about it. Story 5 First time my mother met my high school girlfriend was walking into my bedroom with my girlfriend completely naked on the bed and me fully clothed on the computer. Elaborate, please. Story 6. Uh, I was the girlfriend in question. I had come over to my long-distance relationship boyfriend's apartment on the way out of town. I had dressed in a plaid skirt fishnets, combat boots, and a low-cut black tank because I wanted to leave him with a good memory. 
So he's got me pinned face first against the wall with my skirt flipped up and he's fingering me when his dad walks in. Apparently, he'd come by early to take him to lunch and drop him at his job. I was absolutely mortified during the entire lunch with his dad, dad's girlfriend, and my boyfriend. Oh my goodness, that sounds incredibly awkward and mortifying. It's always a risk when engaging in any kind of intimate activity, especially in someone else's home. It's unfortunate that his dad walked in at such an inopportune moment, but hopefully he was understanding and didn't make things too uncomfortable during lunch. Story 7. I never thought I would strike a teenager until I saw a boy smack my daughter's butt in front of me with impunity. If my dad's Reddit name was Whistle Sausage, I would perish. Story 8. When I first met my ex's dad, I thought in my young, naive 17-year-old brain that it would be a great idea to go in for a big manly handshake. He'd broken his wrist in a cycling accident the week before. I can still hear the crack it made in my nightmares. I also may or may not have let him drive himself to the hospital while I had disappointing teenage spicy time with his daughter. <laughs> Story 9. My boyfriend in high school was a senior at a different school. I was a sophomore. At their high school homecoming game, it was a tradition for all seniors to dress up in camouflage. So my mom first met him when he was dressed head to toe in black and white camouflage and wasn't aware of the tradition. As he was walking towards us, she said, Oh, God, no, and didn't realize I'd heard her. Well, I have to say, meeting your significant other's parents for the first time can be a nerve-wracking experience for anyone. But having your boyfriend show up to the meeting dressed head to toe in camouflage? That's definitely a memorable first impression. Story 10. My sister brought a boy home who didn't know how to use a knife and fork? Story 11. I'm just sitting here waiting for a story that might sound like me. Story 12. I was over at my boyfriend's family's house for Easter when we all got together for an Easter egg hunt, dinner, and party games. My boyfriend's middle sister had recently started seeing a guy she met on eHarmony, who apparently lived in Toronto. She spent the afternoon telling us about him, that he owned a delivery business and a flower shop, was originally from somewhere in Africa, but moved to England, and then here, etc., etc. My boyfriend's brother joked that he was a substance dealer for his delivery business, and we laughed as she tried to defend him. So he finally drives up in a very expensive car, wearing a t-shirt with arrows pointing to the shoulders and the caption, Place Legs Here, written across the chest. Everyone started interrogating him, but he was avoidant of everything. I worked in a flower shop for seven years, and he couldn't name any flowers. Granted, his English wasn't perfect, and he was very awkward, but the substance dealer possibility became more likely as time went on. Afterwards, he went full-blown creepy stalker. She broke up with him since he couldn't explain anything, and he sent her 40-plus text messages trying to get her back, wrote poems about how much it hurt to miss her, and said he'd drop by her work. She blocked his number, reported him on eHarmony, and everyone in the family has sworn a pact to immediately call police if we see him anywhere. It was like standing next to a train wreck as it happened. Kind of cruel of you guys to treat him that way when he went out of his way to dress up in his nice shirt. I can see how it would be uncomfortable to have your boyfriend's sister's new boyfriend show up in a Place Legs Here t-shirt and not be able to answer basic questions about his supposedly owned businesses. And the fact that he became a creepy stalker afterwards is definitely not cool. But I do agree with you, it's not very nice to judge someone solely based on their appearance or behavior. Story 13. The first weekend, I went to stay with my boyfriend's parents. I had met them before. My boyfriend and I played Drinkopoly with some of his friends. Like Monopoly, but you drink instead of using money. Everything was great. I went to bed a little earlier than everyone else, and my boyfriend's friends left saying, She drinks pretty well for a girl. He comes up to bed. I proceed to throw up everywhere. On him, on his sheets, on myself. He then put me in the shower and I apparently screamed random numbers at him and got angry when he didn't understand. His parents were ridiculously cool about the whole thing. The next day, as my boyfriend slept off the trauma, I washed puke off the sheets, then went with his mom to play with the cats they were soon to adopt. Oh, 
and the next day his younger sister walked in on us having spicy time. Still don't understand how his family can like me. Story 14. When I brought my first serious boyfriend home to meet my mom, he was wearing a misfit sweatshirt. My mom, bless her, ignored his dyed mohawk, gauged ears, and pierced nose and said that she liked his panda sweatshirt. I laughed so hard I cried. Gotta give him credit, though. He stuck around for four years. Story 15. Not me, but a friend's new girlfriend upon meeting his dad. You frickin' old, eh? In her defense, she was a newfie. Story 16. I created another account for this because my son knows my other account. My son's girlfriend was having intimate conversations with my son in the living room, even though I was sitting right there. I coughed and left to give them some room, but when I came back, I found them smashing on the sofa. I had to tell them to stop because my wife was on the way and she would be ticked. That's so rude and creepy of your son and his girlfriend. At least have the decency to sneak around. Story 17. My son's girlfriend just, will just, I have not stopped singing Let It Go and it's really strange to wear on my son. I should mention they're five. Wouldn't have been surprised if she was 15 either. Story 18. When my mother was 14, she wanted to date this boy who was 17, but my grandparents wouldn't let her because they just don't trust him. My mom argues with her parents, but they stand firm on their decision. Flash forward about eight years, my mom is happily married. Her parents show her the newspaper, and that boy, grown up now, made the paper. Substance deal gone wrong, armed robbery, double homicide, and self-unaliving. Story 19. I clogged my girlfriend's toilet after pooping and flooded the entire bathroom with poop water, destroying all their bathroom rugs. Story 20. My whole family met my current boyfriend over Easter dinner. My father doesn't typically say a word to new people my siblings and I bring home. Randomly, during dinner, my dad turned to my boyfriend and said, You a racist? Story 21. A family friend brought home a guy who told us he jumped out of a mission plane in World War I and that he used to star in some TV show in Canada. He was 33 in 2012. Story 22. The night my sister's ex met my parents, he went off on a tangent about how proud he was not to work and how good it is that the state gives him food stamps and welfare. My dad, who's been a consistently hard worker his entire life, blew a fuse that night. The ex continued his jackassery for some time, but shortly after he recommended to my sister that they move into Section 8 housing, that's when she had the sense to call it quits. Well, it sounds like this guy really knew how to make a great first impression. I mean, what better way to win over your girlfriend's family than by bragging about not working and relying on government assistance? It's a real shame he couldn't keep up the charm for much longer. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 23. One time, my sister brought a Hispanic boyfriend by the house. My father, since deceased, said this to him. Well, I'm not too thrilled about this. But hey, at least you aren't black. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Story 24. I was working at a pizza place in my teenage years and started talking to this girl. She came over one night when my parents were asleep. My mother is hard of hearing and my father is a rock when he's asleep. She comes over and we start fooling around and we pass out. I was thinking that since the next day was a work day, she could leave after they left for work. We woke up and were both naked. So being 17 and looking at a naked girl, we start to fool around again. Then I go for the money shot and get some in her eye. She starts crying and saying it hurts a lot. We left my room to go to the bathroom so she could wash her face. Now, you have to pass the computer room to get to the bathroom, and guess who's sitting there? My mom. She took the day off to pick up my cousin from the airport and was on TMZ.com killing time. Her reaction was quite priceless and humiliating as she turned to say good morning and saw me and this girl she never met before, but naked. And that was the last time she came over to my house. Work was pretty awkward after that day, too. Story 25. When I was in ninth grade, I went to my girlfriend's house at the time while her parents were supposed to be at work. We were just hanging downstairs when her dad came through the door totally unexpectedly. 
I still to this day have no idea how he unlocked the door so dang fast. He sat me down and talked to me and asked if I thought coming over while nobody was home was the right thing to do, and I nervously said, Yes! Story 26 My 27-year-old daughter had been talking to a friend of a friend on Facebook. He was supposedly in the Army, just finished basic, and was at a base in Texas. On Friday night, he showed up at our house. We live in Missouri. He flew in to surprise her. She was surprised. I was ticked. Asked him how long he was in town, where he was staying. The punk kid used all his money to buy his one-way plane ticket and take a cab to our house. I ended up driving this kid back to the airport, buying a plane ticket for him and sending him back on his merry way. Turns out, he thought he would just not go back to his base and live at our house until my daughter finished high school. Yeah, not happening. She's 25 now, and we're just laughing about this last week when she and her husband were having dinner with us. That was one crazy, scary guy. It's a good thing you were able to handle the situation and make sure he left. It's always scary when someone shows up unannounced, especially if they have ulterior motives. I'm glad you and your daughter can laugh about it now. It's important to find humor in difficult situations and move on. Story 27. My mom and current wife met for the first time at 2 a.m. in my parents' living room, both wearing no bottoms. Story 28. My friend was at his girlfriend's house to meet her parents for the first time. Before dinner, they were just sitting in his room, and she was talking about how uncomfortable bras are, so he tried one on. Cue the father walking in to say dinner was ready. Story 29. My high school boyfriend met my dad on the way from my room to the bathroom to clean himself up after getting his hands completely soaked during some especially intense finger blasting. My dad went in for the handshake. He had no choice but to oblige. Oh, God, I'm sorry, Dad. Story 30. We walked into the house and found my 15-year-old son spears deep in his 14-year-old girlfriend. Her laid out on the oak dining room table while he was pounding away from a standing position. When I first heard the noise, I thought he was watching corn on the downstairs computer and thought it'd be funny, dad humor, to sneak up on him and yell, Well, what have we got here? Did not expect a live spicy show featuring my firstborn. They didn't see me for some indeterminate amount of time, and I froze in a sort of brain lock what the hell moment. The spicy time itself didn't really shock me that much. It was the whole corn scene element. The girl went to a religious school, and they had to wear those schoolgirl outfits, and she hadn't bothered to take off anything other than her panties. So my son was enacting a scene right out of an adult film on the table. What really put the whole thing over the top is that the girl finished explosively screaming, bucking a few seconds after I walked in, and she saw me, shocked face, jaw hitting the floor as she was coming down from heaven. In retrospect, though, I'm rather proud of my boy. God knows I never got to bang a religious schoolgirl on my parents' dining room table, nor do the deed well enough at 15 to give her the time of her life. I had to be responsible and rehash the talk afterwards, of course. But really, I just wanted to give him a high five and a job well done. I'm sure you gave your son a memory he wanted to forget. Kudos to you for sitting down with your son and having the talk. Story 31 I met my high school girlfriend's parents when they returned early from a long walk to find us 69ing on their family room couch. I was calmly and sternly asked to leave the house. I then proceeded to back my dad's car over a random tool lying in the middle of their driveway, popping a tire and causing a loud clunking noise with every tire rotation. I had already messed up with her parents. I wasn't going to ruin my dad's car and have him kill me, too. So I attempted a speedy tire change in the driveway, praying her parents were busy elsewhere. I couldn't find which tire had blown or what caused it. One of the tires seemed flatter, so I started changing it. As I did, her garage door opened. Her father is in his car attempting to leave for work, and I have now blocked his driveway. He stayed in his running car the entire time I changed the tire. And as I finished, started the car, and began backing out of the driveway again, I heard clunk, 
and realized I had in fact changed the wrong tire. So I pulled to the side of the driveway to let him leave and allow me to change the correct tire. Instead, he stayed in his running car watching me the entire time. He wasn't going to leave until the dumb jerk who defiled his daughter on his family room couch and spent 20 minutes changing a wrong tire left his property. A week later, my girlfriend handed me a check from her parents to cover the cost of the tire, as it was their fault for leaving the tool in the driveway. My dad had already bought new tires, so I spent the money on beer. Sounds like a win to me. Story 32 I can't remember if this is the first time they actually met or not, but in high school, I had my girlfriend at the time, and I thought nobody else was home. We were about to have spicy time, and I heard something in the hallway, but just brushed it off as just some random house sound. I have my dong in my hand, guiding it in, when my bedroom door flies open and I just hear my dad scream, I don't think so. The girl started immediately crying her eyes out, and it was one of the worst days ever. Kind of funny looking back on it, though. Wow, that sounds like a really awkward and embarrassing situation. It's understandable that you found it kind of funny to look back on, though. I think most people have had some sort of mortifying moment in their teenage years. Story 33. When I met my girlfriend's mom for breakfast, I ate the whole family's sausage and bacon, thinking it was the plate they had left for me since I showed up late. They were too nice to say anything. I want to know how much bacon and sausage you ate. Story 34. The first time my dad met one of my girlfriends from college was when he just waltzed into my room and found us in the middle of spicy time, doggy style, facing the door. Those two seconds of eye contact felt like a lifetime. He never mentioned it again, though. I like to think he felt an ounce of pride, and he got to see some 19-year-old boobs. Story 35. The first time I met my sister's boyfriend, I had just got home from a day on the slopes, and as I was walking up the stairs, I heard the subtle clinking of a belt as he was pulling up his pants. I just went into the shower and waited as long as I could until I had to go down and actually meet the kid face to face. Story 36 The handsome little sucker sang a song about smashing my hot daughter. Runt. Story 37 My girlfriend, now wife, met my parents for the first time at my dad's surprise 60th. In her nervousness, she proceeded to get plastered and is repeatedly shushed by my mother during speeches for laughing too loud and long with my mom's friend. The next morning, she's hating life as she comes downstairs for breakfast. My older brother, who has the maturity of a 13-year-old, sees her in distress and proceeds to wave a platter of eggs and bacon under her nose. As she bolts for the bathroom, my mom, who has a long career in the addictions field, pulled me into the hallway and asks me, Does she do this a lot? A less than auspicious entry into my family. That's quite an introduction to the family. I can imagine how nervous your girlfriend must have been meeting your parents for the first time, especially at such a big occasion. But it sounds like things didn't go exactly as planned. Getting drunk and laughing too loudly during speeches probably wasn't the best way to make a good impression. But we all make mistakes. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.